right, so we're checking out the only game where you have to decide who lives and who dies between an old grandmother and a psychopathic murderer that smells like cream of mushroom soup. It's Curb the Population. Population curbing decent people, damn it. In Curb the Population, you play a young player. You've been given the prestigious job of deciding between two people over and over again who lives and who dies. All in the nature of promoting sustainability, of course. So the game gives you a bunch of people and you get to decide who has to die out of all of them. And whoever's left, it will show you what sort of future you have created. Let us begin. This is kind of a twisted experiment because it's promoting sustainability, but realistically, I wanna pick all the people that are dirtbags. Jenny is a college student in her sophomore year. She is studying to get her degree in physics. She hates pizza and is allergic to dogs. This one sentence alone is enough to get you killed in my book. Jenny has absolutely no redeeming qualities. I'm very curious if those are her bare arms and she just has like an unnatural shade of green on her body or if she's wearing a shirt under her shirt. I will also take this opportunity to mention that Jenny's legs look like an upside down goalpost. Once she threw up on her best friend in the second grade. Was this like her one redeeming sentence here? Cause as of right now, whoever's up against Jenny is going to be hard pressed to be a worse person than she is. Studying to get your degree doesn't even count either. I studied to get my degree too. You wanna know what it did for me? Not a goddamn thing. The fact that she ate pizza is still bothering me. Wilfred is a pop star. He has his own clothing line. At age 16, he released his first album with big name records and it went platinum in a week. Wow, this guy's like a pink haired Elvis that does everything right. He also wonders what it would be like to slap a baby. Whoa, oh shit. Wilfred is like entropy incarnate. Are these people like filling out these questionnaires or something? Or is this something that just Big Brother pulled off of his computer? Oh, Wilfred, you were pretty much gonna be a goner, but now, <laughs> girl that hates pizza and has no real reason for living, or guy that wants to slap a baby. If we're going for the worst of the worst, it's gotta be the baby slapper that lives. Goodbye, Jenny. Palco is a DJ. DJ Quick Fit, to be specific. Only three people have ever died at his shows. I love how this sentence reads like a compliment. I guess the real question is how many shows has he had? This is like something that would be on a billboard. You know how like a thing will say like new and improved? For DJ Quick Fit, it's like only three confirmed deaths. He collects his hair clippings in bags in his house and travels to India once a year. This game generates the strangest for people I have ever read in my entire life. It's like someone asked an AI on amphetamines to generate a backstory for a character and this is what you get. Nothing's really that bad here, it's just stupid. Sandine is a grandma of twin grandchildren who are both starting high school this year. Her favorite food is ham, and she loves public access television. During the Cold War, she stole secrets for Russia. Wow, this is literally Mother Russia. I like how she has no mouth. She stole secrets and lost her mouth. Also, what is with the fashion sense these people have? This lady dresses like the Joker if the Joker shopped at the dollar store. Who should die? I... <laughs> They're both useless. <laughs> Palco does have three confirmed kills at the very least, so we're gonna keep him around. What the hell is this name? Lorcius? Whatever, is a food critic, or at least he thinks he is. He spends his evenings writing reviews on Yelp. Once he found a bone in his tomato soup. Oh my. Also, he always wears clogs. I appreciate that the game is now just randomly deciding to weigh in on people's abilities. Also, this isn't that bad. It doesn't specify that it was like a human bone or anything. Down here in Florida, our tomatoes have bones in them. You gotta debone your tomatoes before putting them in the soup. They could have at least given him an extra pixel for the clogs. Paul is a pretty regular dude. He's a manager at Target. Paul hates Target. He also hates Walmart, but for very different reasons, <laughs> but. When Paul was six, he ate a chili pepper, and now he never eats spicy foods. I like how everyone else's synopsis is like an 11 and Paul's is like a two. The only thing that's even slightly unusual here is the fact that he just hates big box stores. Sad food review guy or Paul? <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. Curse yourself for being average. October is blind. However, she is highly educated. She has three degrees and can recite lines from Romeo and Juliet from memory. She's afraid of 
politicians and dreams of living in Alaska. She looks like the lady from those cards that you find at Hallmark. Honestly, so far it's sounding like if I leave her inside the gene pool, everyone's gonna be way too educated. Menska wants to get swole. Already this guy is scoring big points. He works out every day. Menska also really loves steroids, steaks, and strip malls. Storage is his favorite word to say. It's all S's. I don't know why I focused on that. Why is this even here? Somebody help. My AI is drunk. He can be heard whispering it to himself sometimes. The word storage? I mean, he's not really dangerous. He's just an idiot. October is like a great human being though, so she must die. Inika is a male woman. She delivers your mail in rain, sleet, or snow. In high school, she wanted to be a radiologist, but never really got far. Inika has once slapped a baby right in its squishy face. What is with this game and baby slapping? I can't have two baby slappers, so we need someone really impressive next. She delivers your mail in rain, sleet, or snow. Yeah, unless the mail is to a baby. Alicia has cancer. She only has three months left to live. She travels from town to town living life and seeing the sights. She's not depressed or defeated. She is at peace with the world around her. Wow, this is the most sparkling profile I've ever read. Honestly, the only thing that's negative is if I let her repopulate the world, Bruh. she'll be dead in three months, so it won't really matter. There's only one thing to do in this instance. Alicia, your doctor said you had three months to live. He lied. Bonvo likes to think he is a rabbit. Well, we're off to a really good start here. I'm really digging the hairstyle too. I like the rabbit look, although it looks more like you have giant cheese doodles coming out of your skull. Each spring he goes on a camping trip where he lives amongst his kind. His kind being rabbits, I'm assuming. He used to only eat carrots, but he ended up in the hospital because of malnutrition. Kids, <laughs> see, this is why you stay in school. Also, I used to have a rabbit. A little bastard tried to give himself diabetes by drinking my milkshake. Don't give me this crap about rabbits only eating carrots. Spunk is odd. He smells of cheese and sweat. Spunk always has a coffee with him. Except for when the developer had to draw his character on the screen. He frequently stares off into the distance. Many people gossip that Spunk is an alien or a crazy person. Don't trust Spunk. I like how even the game is telling me not to pick this guy. We're totally picking this guy to live. Not only that, he wears green shoes and he looks like a human version of a troll doll. He's perfect. Who should die? Bonvo. All right, we need to thin these guys down more. We have to decide between Wilfred or Palco now. Wilfred was the original baby slapper. Palco was the DJ. We're gonna keep our confirmed killer. All right, food critic or swole guy? The swole guy sounded way crazier. I think he needs to live on. Okay, now we've got male lady and the guy that smells like cheese and sweat and takes a coffee everywhere with him and might be an alien. The fact that he might be an alien means like I can't allow him to die. Indica, special delivery. Thank you for your input. Let us tell you of the fates of the humans you have selected to survive. Palco soon quit the DJ scene. He realized his collecting of hair was odd and so he went on a spiritual journey. Eventually, he settled down in the mountains of Tibet where he would grow old and die. What the hell? I had such high hopes for you, you bastard. You quit DJing, you couldn't even get 10 people killed. Palco is a disappointment. Menska choked to death on a chicken sandwich in a strip mall four years after the decision to allow him to live. His last words were, never trust white meat. I appreciate that at least this guy got four years of being useless before he died to a chicken sandwich. His last word should have been storage. Wasn't that the thing that he's always whispering to himself? Steroids didn't help you there, did it? You chicken choker. Spunk was not an alien. That's disappointing. However, he was a psychopath. Okay, never mind. It was immediately amazing. He ended up killing upwards of three dozen children over the course of 15 years. Jesus Christ. Eventually, he was caught and given the death sentence. I like that this guy out of everyone, like, lived the longest numerically. The other guy went on a spiritual journey where he grew old and died, but we don't really know how old he was to start. I was thinking all the other characters didn't really have lives that were that bad, but Spunk really took it over the edge. Hold on, I need to know what happens if we allow other people to live. Jenny went on to get her degree in physics and became an influential scientist. She is credited as the mother of sub- Turbo hyper unphysics. Her friend never forgave Jenny for throwing up on her. They they added this like this is what we all wanted to know. Paul kept on working at Target. He never really did anything special or exceptional. Just kept on keeping on. 
He passed away at the age 58, only leaving behind a pet dog. Jesus, I really chose the cream of the crop last time. You couldn't have tried like online dating or anything, Paul. It doesn't even say why he died. It's probably Target. He hated working at Target. Hatred leads to the dark side. The dark side killed him at age 58. Bonvo's delusions of being a rabbit got worse and worse until finally he was admitted into a psychiatric hospital. There he spent the rest of his days thinking he was a rabbit. I'll bet a very confused one. Not a single person died here. Might as well finish it off. Sandine passed away a year after the decision that she would be allowed to survive. <laughs> Sandine, you let us all down. Someone should have told me that her expiration date was only a year. October moved to Alaska and absolutely loved it. She never got married, but met a wonderful woman named Susanna. They lived together until October died. Oddly enough, October would become the first blind governor. See how nice the world could have been if I would have allowed these people to live? Alicia's cancer went into remission and she lived for another 10 years before the cancer returned. During her travels, she visited every single continent. Her last words were, truly I am happy. Wilfred, I have killed you so many times, but this time I will allow you to live so that we may know what your future has in store for you. Wilfred, I'm killing an old lady for you. Feel thankful. Wilfred continued to make pop music. When he eventually lost the interest of the public, he developed a substance addiction and died at the age of 35. He did, however, get to slap a baby. Two even. I appreciate that this game never forgets the horrible atrocities that its characters think of when they created their background. Wait, were these his babies or someone else's babies? It doesn't really go into it. Someone needs to ask the real questions. Where did these babies come from? Indica continued to deliver mail until one day she was finally caught by the police. What a sad crime, like illegally delivering mail to the people. Oh, she was sent to prison for life for all the babies she had slapped. Originally, I thought she had only slapped one baby. Did she end up going on like a baby slapping spree? Enjoy prison life, Indica, because in prison, babies slap you. Lord of the Ringsius, how could I have forgotten about you, my purple haired son? He continued wearing clogs and critiquing food. He soon married and had three children. This is like the most normal background that any of the people in this game have had yet. Oh, never mind. At age 72, he died in a horrible skiing accident. And this isn't any kind of rookie number skiing accident either. There's three goddamn eyes in that skiing right there. Well, I think that this game has showed us that if these are the people that we're dealing with, the entire population is probably going to need to be curbed. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Curve the Population. Until next time, stay foxy and much love.